Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tyler, and today I'm bringing you guys What If Tori won. Now, this What If is going to bring a pretty dark event in the series, even darker than the whole Miguel falling off the railing thing. So yeah, prepare yourselves, and I honestly had a lot of fun making this scenario. So if you guys have any more scenarios you'd like to suggest to me, let me know down below. Now, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into this What If, because we actually do have a lot to cover on, ironically. This What If changes a lot of things, so prepare yourselves. You was on some op shit. I was cruising down a nigga block with a chopstick. Rock star nigga. Nah, I need a rock bitch. So in this timeline, instead of Sam reacting to Tori at the last second and kicking her down the stairs, we will say Tori lands her blow this time, which would hit either Sam's face or throat. Regardless, Tori is stabbing a very critical part of Sam. No matter how you look at it, Sam is going to be in critical injury. And Tori stabs Sam in this timeline, Sam cries out for help, and this stops Miguel and Robbie from fighting. They stop to see what happened, and Robbie, seeing Sam, immediately rushes down the stairs with Miguel following Robbie. And both of them seeing the damage that Tori has done, with blood coming off of Tori's knuckle dusters, along with blood leaking everywhere, and Sam on the ground. Robbie would rush to Sam's aid, and Miguel seeing Tori do this would just say, does she realize what she has done? And at that point, Tori seeing Robbie running to Sam, she's gonna try and stab Robbie, but Miguel seeing this in time stops Tori and pins her to the ground, saying enough. Tori's confused as to why Miguel's pinning her down. Miguel and Sam kissed each other and Tori was just trying to protect what's hers. And Miguel said that she went too far. Miguel would even say how that's not what their sensei taught him, which Robbie would hear. At that point, we would then see the medic and the cops arrive and Tori being pinned by Miguel means Tori's not gonna run away like how Robbie did. This time, she's actually gonna be taken into custody off rip. I think Robbie would acknowledge that Miguel did say that Johnny didn't really teach Tori any of this, but the thing is, Robbie's just kind of in a bad mental state at this point since his girlfriend is literally in the hospital and might just die. So right now, he's kind of unbalanced. We cut to Daniel at Miyagi-Do, and we then see Amanda calling out for Daniel and Daniel asking what happened, and we then cut to them being in the hospital in the waiting room. Carmen would get a call from the school along with Johnny where both of them decide to head to the hospital, and they would then see Miguel, who isn't in nearly as bad of shape as he was in the original timeline. But he does begin to break down when he sees Carmen and Johnny, and he explains to them what had happened, and soon after this, Johnny tries to find Robbie's room, and he manages to do so where the two then talk. Miguel is letting it all out, but right now he kind of needs Carmen to comfort him, and Johnny goes on to go and see his child, where Robbie, again, is a little unbalanced and uneasy right now, so when Johnny comes in the room, he just thinks of Tori, who murdered Sam, and he just kind of lets out all of his anger onto Johnny. Robbie would say how one of his students injured Sam and is mainly pinning the blame onto Johnny, but Johnny would say how he shouldn't have ever let Crease back in his life, but now things have changed, and Johnny says how he can fix it, but Robbie soon cuts him off saying that what's done is done and it's too late for him. Johnny at that point would then be told by Robbie to leave the room and Johnny leaves knowing that what he did was mainly his fault and he goes to Carmen and Miguel once again where Miguel says how Johnny was right and no mercy isn't the way and Miguel never wanted this to happen. Miguel would then proceed to blame himself saying how none of this would have happened if him and Sam never kissed and which led to Tori going wild but Johnny says how he can't blame himself for her escalating the whole situation like that. Miguel may have maybe started it but the thing is Tori completely escalated it to a different scale. Johnny would then cut Miguel off, saying how Miguel is better than just blaming himself for something he knows isn't fully his fault. Instead of just sulking around, he needs to just admit his mistakes and move forward. That's the best he can do right now. We cut to where Amanda and Daniel are, and we see a doctor then coming out and then announcing that Sam isn't going to make it. Amanda begins to break down, and Daniel's at a loss for words, and trying to hold it down and trying to make sure Amanda's okay without losing his own mind himself. Johnny here leaves with Carmen and Miguel, and Amanda and Daniel are currently not going to be going to the elevator, so we never get the elevator scene because they are processing the whole fact that Sam is gone. Miguel and Carmen go home while Johnny goes back home as well, and in this timeline, there is no crease coming back. Reason why is due to him coming back was only because Cobra Kai felt betrayed by Johnny, but in this timeline, they wouldn't feel betrayed at all. Ali sends Johnny a friend request, and this time Johnny sees it and is speechless. As for Tori, I think she would have tried to storm off, but I think Miguel is not going to just let this happen, so he'll just probably keep her pinned down until Tori is then taken into custody. 
And after Sam is revealed to be dead, this means Tori is not just going to have a probation because, you know, she has to take care of her mom. No, this is murder. She's going to actually get charged. So this time, Tori is actually going to be going to jail. It's going to be hard to say what's going to happen to Tori's mom, considering all she has now is her little brother to try and take care of her. So, yeah, it's going to be a little weird to talk about that. So we'll just kind of leave that in the background since we can't really go anywhere with that. And Daniel and Amanda check in on Robbie and inform him of what happened to Sam, which leaves Robbie speechless. Robbie at first was regretting what he said towards his father, but now he's glad he said what he said and is glad that he made Johnny leave his room. After that, Daniel is then reminded of Johnny and basically this whole situation happened because of his student and Daniel isn't really thinking of the specifics in this moment. He's just enraged and in a blinding rage, he decides to storm off the hospital and get in his car and immediately charge down to Johnny's house where he would then drive up, pull up, and he would then kick down Johnny's door. To Johnny's surprise, he sees Daniel and questions why he's here and Daniel just says to finish what they started. At that point, Daniel versus Johnny then ensues and at first, they're just kind of going blow for blow similar to how they did in the final episode of season two however this time i think johnny over the fight would just decide to just let daniel get his hits in because he realizes that mostly this is kind of his fault because he did let crease back into his life he lets daniel let out all of his rage and at that point daniel is going to try and finish johnny but then the second he tries he stops and realizes what he's doing this isn't what Miyagi-Do is all about. This isn't what Miyagi taught him. Him trying to go down this revenge path is something he learned as a kid in Karate Kid 2 and remembers how Miyagi said how this isn't the way. And so Daniel stops and proceeds to say how this little rivalry is done now and they can finally move on with their lives. With this, Daniel is done with karate and sees what it's done to him while Johnny is going to move with Cobra Kai into a better direction and try to move on with what happened. Kreese is gone, Tori is in jail, now all he can do is try and hope and move forward. He clearly saw how Kreese's teachings definitely influenced some of the kids, so he wants to remove those types of teachings completely from those kids' minds. We transition into season three where things are very different from our main timeline. Cobra Kai isn't a group of bullies, but rather this time are learning from their mistakes in season three and are learning to move forward. We see this in Hawk this season who decides to squash him and Dimitri's beef. Same with Bert and Mitch who learn from Johnny. And this is where we see Kreese and his teachings slowly dissolving from the kids' minds and them getting back on the right track, AKA Johnny's path or Johnny's Cobra Kai. So by the earliest episodes, I can honestly see Chris and Mitch being cool along with Hawk and Dimitri and Bert and Nate. To kind of remove the crease mentality from these kids' minds, we would basically just have Johnny using Tori as an example, Tori using No Mercy, and what did that get her? In jail. Using this example, the kids can definitely adjust to the new and improved Cobra Kai, and we see them transition into that instead of spiraling down into bullyhood. As for Daniel, he's quit karate completely, and if anything, the dealership would still be doing fine, if not better, due to him being the father of the victim who passed away from the school incident, rather than Sam being the one who caused it, which drives the dealership away. So this means that they actually don't have to rely on that whole Okinawa plan, which means Daniel never has to go to Okinawa, which means he never learns the pressure point technique. However, he wasn't going to probably learn it anyway, considering the fact that he's done with karate. Daniel's job is doing fine in this timeline and not doing worse, so this means Daniel never goes to Okinawa and stays and actually works on his business. And I think during this time, Robbie would definitely try and slowly get back into the LaRusso household. Even though he did mess up, we have to understand that Robbie and Daniel are both grieving over the same thing. So I can 100% see Daniel showing sympathy, especially Amanda would as well, and maybe Amanda could influence Daniel in letting Robbie come back, which could slowly lead into Daniel getting into karate, but at best, I think Robbie and Daniel are just going to be keeping up with their training. He is not opening up that bag again. He is not opening up that book again. He just doesn't want anything to do with it. He ended it with Johnny, and so he wants to continue living like a normal person. We would get a scene of Sam's funeral where Robbie and Miguel both attend along with the other kids that are from the school and aren't going to try and fight each other obviously and i think here since cobra kai is moving in a new direction miguel tries to apologize for doing what he did at the party since it basically caused tori to escalate it robbie nods and goes on to say thanks for saving him back at the school fight because tori was going to try and stab him but miguel saved him and miguel says no need tori was crazy and needed to be stopped 
Robbie agrees and says how they both don't have to be friends or anything. Robbie agrees and he would tell Miguel that they don't have to be friends or anything, nor do they have to have this petty rivalry. If anything, they can just stay out of each other's way and mutually agree that they will stay out of each other's way. No beef or anything. And so Robbie forgives Miguel and Miguel can finally move on, just like how Johnny's trying to teach the other kids. So now we have everyone in Cobra Kai gaining their growth and Miguel now can try and move forward. No bad Cobra Kai means no conflict and Daniel doesn't need to reopen Miyagi-Do ever again but I think he would spar with Robbie occasionally to help him keep up his strength of course and I think Robbie especially after Daniel feels sympathy for him because they're both going through the same pain I think Daniel would allow Robbie to move back in and Robbie is going to stay at the LaRussos for a while and I think the last and final interactions we would get that kind of change are Johnny going to the LaRussos and apologizing for what he did and him bringing back Kreese which led into the whole situation clearly paralleling with what Miguel did at the start of the season and I think reluctantly Daniel and Robbie would both accept the apology knowing Johnny had no idea what he was getting himself into and obviously Chris is a rat and Johnny didn't really see it coming. Amanda would forgive him as well and Johnny would then say how Robbie can stay at the LaRussos and he really doesn't mind. Robbie says thanks to his dad and at that point Daniel and Johnny decide to leave it off on a mutual standing and not having beef with each other. And after this I think the only other things are him and Carmen picking up things and them actually never leaving each other and them just building up their relationship which means when Ali and Johnny interact this means Johnny would establish that he actually already has a girl and Johnny and Ali would just stay as friends. After this all we really get is Tori staying in jail because <laughs> she murdered someone so she's not going to really get out for a long time and when they're convincing about the all valley i think miguel and johnny would combo it since daniel or chris aren't going to be intervening and miguel and johnny can just you know work together for this beat now with that being said ladies and gentlemen this is where i'm going to be concluding the what if as there's really nothing else for me to cover season four probably doesn't even happen since that leads into a timeline that is completely different from the one i made up and unironically tori has the least going on even even after winning but she changes the story significantly and this is where i'm going to be leaving the timeline at for right now and if you guys did enjoy this video be sure to subscribe if you are new hit the like button and suggest me any cobra kai videos you want me to do in the future along with hitting the bell icon right next to the subscribe button that way you are notified and updated every time i upload youtube tends to be wonky with that kind of stuff so be sure to hit that bell icon when you are subscribing if you're new and be sure to go and follow my twitter link in the description my name is tyler and i'm going to see you guys in the next video peace out bye Thank you.